What up guys, this is Kong. I should say good morning to you guys. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing episode uh, Star Wars uh, Rebel Season 4 Episode 7 and Episode 8. But let's talk about Episode 7 called Kindred. So basically, you know, continuing the uh, uh, the story of the, the team there on Lothal, again like I said, and they are stuck there because they were, you know, going to get some more intel about the, uh, 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 what should I call it, uh, the new TIE fighter. And the game just, they have scoped out and they have got hard intel, hard evidence for the Rebel Alliance to really analyze and get what this new TIE fighter is about and how could they uh, counter so to speak and and they are at the campsite I get the base that they're operating were uh, um, being searched by the Empire and Emerald Thrawn had hired a uh, I would say a bounty hunter uh, so to speak but he's more like an animalistic bounty hunter he could smell he got that uh kind of like that pre not predator but kind of like that uh stalking kind of style and he goes out and he uh wait actually before he goes out uh kanan and one of the other uh kanan and zeb and there was another gentleman i can't remember his name but they were at the crash site near the crash site dressed as stormtrooper and they were looking for this hyperdrive that they had left the behind the uh, in previous episode because obviously they had to escape they had to get out the scene before being captured by the empire and they hit it in a uh, kind of in, in the stones uh, in a like a, an openings uh, space and with the stone uh, covering it so they goes in and they find it and then this bounty hunter came along and he could smell them like miles away it's it's crazy it's like how can one can smell that far and he go after them like you know a lion chasing his prey you know so he follows them and they get into like kind of uh, chase uh there's a chase scene and whatnot there's blasting gun blasting like sabers going on and um some sort of trooper uh die but they don't show it that explicitly uh yeah but they just kind of did that really fast so you kind of you missed it but obviously the intended intention that they actually did they die uh, so uh, before, before uh, Kanan and uh, the other uh, the other guy they escaped, this bounty hunter obviously used a, a tracker, and they were able to track uh, Kanan and this, their uh, I get their fellow rebels that live on a uh, Lothal, and they go back to base, and then on base I think this is the most significant. Uh, part of this story, a uh, part of this episode seven, Kinder, is because because Caden say you know to talk to Hera, and he like you know what if, what are we gonna do if we the rebel when this empire when this thing is blown over is done and and Hera is like I won't stop until the empire is gone eliminated. The, the galaxy can uh, be free of their mighty grip, you know, the iron fist, uh, that the the world, other world can be, you know, be free and do whatever they want, that they wishes to. And then Cain is like, what about us, you know? What, were, what are you gonna do? And she's like, I don't know, it's kind of typical, you know, of, uh, of anyone in that, in her position, but like, not really think about the future, more like thinking about right now because they're fighting against the Empire. It's almost like a day-to-day -day fight. 
you know, because you're fighting against an empire, you're trying to take an empire that's so, so vast, so big, that you have to, it's almost like they're fighting against the small, the small battles. They're not fighting the big battle, they're, small, they're fighting the small battle every day, uh, inch by inch, really, and, and just trying to over, trying to like cut the knees down so the empire will fall down. So, and Kanem is like, have you thought about us? You know, what are we going to do after the Empire is done? And she's like, I, I don't know. And then they, uh, you know, started kissing. And then it was like, yes! To me, I was like, yes, god damn it, finally! These two, ki those, these two kids, they finally kissed each other. It's like, because you could tell in earlier season, it's like, they had... Uh, a relationship, but it wasn't told to us as the audience. But you could tell that they they had uh, they love each other, they like each other, they want each, they care about each other, uh, they care about each other's safety. So it's like they have the all the quality of a couple or the trait of couples. So it's like, come on, you need to commit your love to each other before one or the other. It's gone. You have to cherish the moment you have with the other person. If you don't, then you never know because when that other person is gone, you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be, you'll be talking to yourself about, I wish, I wish, I wish, what if, what if? It's like that's the worst thing you can ever have. Is the what if? Is you need to take the action and say, Hey, I love you. He, they didn't really say that I love you, but when they kiss, it's a sign that they love each other. So, and that was to me was the most gratifying, uh, um, I guess, growth for our for the main uh, one of the, the few main characters in this in this uh, in this Star Wars Rebel is that they finally commit to this and they finally understand their love for each other. And the game like, hey, you know, you know, okay, I S S I N G on the bird on the tree. But truthfully, I'm glad that they, you know, brought this up and they they love each other, and I'm happy for them, really. And that this is it's good because you gotta have a love with struggles, uh, within and externally. So, however, and then the. Trooper came over and they're like, ah, shit, you know, we gotta like dip, we gotta bounce because if we don't bounce, we're gonna get an LSK, we're gonna get captured by the Empire and hair, uh, Sabine had hooked up to, uh, hooked up the generator to, uh, uh one of the ship. And I, to me, it's like, how do one hook up the, a generator to a ship? You know, it's not like you just, plop out and put it back in because it's hyperdrive, you know? It's like, how would they all work? I'd like to get more, I want to know more about that sort of uh, trade work or that work involving uh, swapping out, uh, you know, hyperdrive. Is it easy as like just swapping engine out of the car or what? But to me, I would think it's a, it would be more involved, you know, uh, mechanically and software wise because you're putting a bigger stronger hardware uh, into this uh, into a uh, an old ship and they even say that it's a 50 50 percent chance that you might explode and, f and the other 50 cent chance that you might survive it's like eh, okay I don't know if and hair like that ah, fuck it yeah that's a good uh and she actually escaped the uh, Empire blockade, um, and the interesting thing they showed about that is like how on this ship, I like get the station ship had like an opening pass for you know landing and stuff, and she literally go hyperdrive right between that. It's like you wouldn't want to be in that area when someone go hyperdrive, and she escaped to uh, Yavin Four, I believe, and so the gang is stuck back at home. And they're uh, back on Lothal, and they're like, ah, shit, 
we gotta run and they they run for their life they have to you know because you when your base is exposed you gotta run find another base to operate from they are essentially a guerrilla soldier and that's what these rebels are is guerrilla fight and they are fighting on the, the empire is fighting on their turf and they are the guerrillas fighter so then then they see this low wolf and they're like what the fuck is going on you know i would i would i said the same thing i'm like what the fuck you know and they follow this these three uh wolf one is white and the other two are brown and that's end of episode seven so let's watch it now let's talk about episode eight so it's episode eight the gang uh follow the three wolf it's this tunnel you know and they're like uh okay you know they've been bombarded by the empire and they're like shit we can't stay in this cave because it, the cave's gonna collapse and that's obvious because that's that's the worst place you want to be because that's because you don't want to get trapped and crushed by you know stone that you can't move even the most powerful jedi would not want to be in that position so they follow the wolf and then they go to this sort of i would say tunnel i wouldn't say tunnel i would say a spiritual tunnel or an extra dimensional tunnel because when they pop on the other side they're on the southern hemisphere of the planet it's like whoa i wish i had that kind of experience and uh, because the way they draw it is like it's really space like it's kind of like the hyperdrive uh you know when you're flying a hyperdrive and you see those things kind of go by it's sort of like, similar like that in that in that sense and they're they're stuck there you know they're like we gotta figure out a way to get a message to Hera get the fuck out of here because you know, I uh, just, you know, one, we gotta, because we're, you know, the, the Empire is blocking the, the planet from entrance and exit, and that's not a bad, that's not a good thing. So they're like, okay, you know, we're gonna listen to the radio, see what's going on, and they find out a crawler. Crawler is basically a, a big, gigantic um, uh, machine that basically go and just, uh, destroy uh, the, the surface uh, of the land. Basically, kind of like a bulldozer, just scraping off everything. But this crawler bulldozer actually incinerates the, the surface of the, of the planet. The reason they went after it because they have a long-range antenna, a long-range communicator that can reach out beyond, like, into deep space. So they're like, you know what, uh, we're stuck here, we might as well do something that's useful, uh, try to get a message to Hera. Uh, and they goes in and they fight a few couple people and they had a fate like they were actually, uh, you know, fighting against, the, uh, you know, enslaving people. But they weren't really, they were just fronting to make it look like they were actually operating the crawlers. And uh, there was a scene that... Got me, got me wondering, like, there was a scene where, as we were fighting against the, I guess, the commander of the crawler, and he almost fell down, and you think that Ezra could have saved his life, but Ezra didn't, and he slipped on Ezra's saber, lightsaber, and he fell down, and Ezra was like, well, that's a bad thing that happened. It was like, to me, it's like I sent some sort of, to me, it's like almost evilness, but it wasn't very clear. It's kind of walking that between that fine line, you know. But he was kind of like actually trying to get rid of Ezra too. So it was a like, to it was like almost a fair game. And then the uh, the the game was a the the gang were able to get the message out to Hera. And Hera is gonna the uh, the rebel is gonna dispatch a team 
a, a, a team to a team of fighter to come and rescue them and take on the empire uh i got the blockade you can say and that was uh you know the most significant part of the episode eight is uh, the game finally getting the message out to hera uh getting a whole of a crawler a piece of the uh a mechanical uh tools of the empire and that's a good thing yeah in any case, when you are fighting against an enemy, you get a hold of their, of their, uh, I want to say ship, any uh, um, uh, asset. I want to say a moving asset is always a good t a good thing for you because you have one their communication system, two you have their uh, asset, and you can pretend to be like them. You can. Do all sorts of things with their asset, and that's the most important thing about fighting against a uh, an enemy that are far superior to you in number and size is to get a hold of their at their asset, cause they're pretty much just laying down their asset. Say here, have it. That's like you just have to take it from us. So it's like the empire is giving us giving them a a, a free platter, basically. You know, laying out there and say, hey, take it whatever you want. That's how, and that's, that's how I would look at it, but I don't know how they would look at it because we, we don't really get to see inside of their head. I wish we get to see more, uh, they need to have more conversation in, in the episode, you kind of get the glimpse of how these rebels really think. So anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for, oh, actually most importantly, let me know what you think of these episodes. Uh, Seven and eight. Did you like it? Not like it? What did you find most important about uh, episode seven and eight? Uh, let me know. Do you agree with me? You disagree with me? What do you think was most important? Let me know. Anyway, guys, I want to say. Oh, also, I keep forgetting. Please like, thumbs up, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and also browse my channel, guys. It's so important that you browse my channel. It give me motivation. I mean, I have motivation without without it too, but still. And let me know that you guys are also watching my review, that you guys appreciate my opinions and my, my work. So, I want to say thank you so much for your time and effort to watching my Star Wars Rebel review, Episode 7 and 8. More Star Wars review to come for you guys. Anyway, take care, enjoy, bye-bye. Well, actually, I should stop this first.